Hey, Deserving Listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and professor. As I always say, everything that I say in reaction to these shows is completely speculative based on very little information that the editors deem to show us and the cast members deem to reveal. So keep that in mind. Let's watch. Change with Ari. Yeah, if you don't like people bullying others, you know, like you were bullying me before, like you were picking on our relationship. Like, you don't always see all the other things that go on. So like, that could be hurtful what you said. Wow. Very healthy for Ariella to say that. Because remember, the, the principles of nonviolent, helpful communication is to speak from the pain or the fear, right? So she's saying it's hurtful when you were bullied. Well, she said the word bullying. So if she wanted to stay away from combative language, she would have worded it like, well, you were coming after us or some other word because the word bullying could carry with it particular associations that Jabri might not be happy about. But but it's fair to say, though, because he was. I mean, just out of nowhere, when other people were talking last week, he just turns to Ariella and Binium. It's just like, your relationship sucks and you're you're doomed. Your, your relationship, you know, you're going to end soon because of how terrible you are, Ariella. And it's just like, wow, <laughs> how would you know that? And and I think I said at the time, of all the, of the relationships on that stage, I think Ariel and Binium are, are the most likely to be together moving forward. Not because their relationship is without issues. It, it is. They do have issues. But they have been together a long time and ha have stayed together. They, I think, manage pretty well on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't think... And, I don't think they're fighting very much. I think I also said that their main problems were when they weren't living together in the same country. That that was highly triggering, I think, to both people for the you know reasons that we know. But when they're living together in the same place, I don't think Ariella is triggered at all, really. I think she's like, well, I'm not worried about Benny. I'm cheating or not loving me because he's sitting right there loving me and hanging out the kids. So I'm secure and everything's fine. Not that Ariella doesn't need healing, that wouldn't, doesn't deserve healing. But anyway, so she says, well, you talk about people bullying you, but you're the bully, <laughs> which is true. Let's see what he says. I wasn't trying to pick on you. I was trying to say, hey, he's got a lot of potential. You should uplift him. That's what couples do. But when old boy right there was talking about, we're going to go hookers and blah, blah, blah. That's not a good role model. Okay, so he's kind of scaling back, maybe because Ariella was a good communicator in that moment and wasn't critical, really, was just saying, hey, you hurt my feelings. And maybe for Jabri, that helped him to have empathy and to pull back a little bit. Because we can imagine if Ariella went after him in a similar way that John was, you know, hey, Sparkles, you're the bully and no one wants to hear you talk and shut up, that kind of... We imagine that Jabri would have said something differently, right? So when we are in a conflict like this and you're mainly focusing on the things that you're getting from the other person, some of that, if not all of it, might be caused, or at least one of the major factors in what you're getting from someone is what you're giving them. The other thing, like, I have so many people, Ethiopian community, I feel like home, I feel better, like, around there. I mean, of course, Vinny's gonna love Las Vegas. That's Vinny in a city. Like, it's bright <laughs> and flashy and noisy and parties, and I don't really like it. And he likes all that stuff. All right, interesting. So he went to Las Vegas and he likes it there, would like to move there, I guess, because of his career, MMA fighting, and also I think he's saying there's a larger Ethiopian community there. And she's saying, yeah, of course he likes it there. It's very him. So, all right. Hey. He's a grown man. He should be able to choose where he want to live, you know. That's true, but... It's a very Muhammad thing to say, uh, as if no one else matters. <laughs> he can't uh, have negotiation or consider other people's wants. Like, it's very Muhammad. If Benny wants to move to Vegas, then... And Ari doesn't, then... And if you're Ari, then you're, you know, SOL. Then do I have to go with him? No. <laughs> this is your dream that we break up. <laughs> no, I don't want y'all to break up. And then Ariella says, oh, by the way, Jibri, this is your dream that we would break up. And in a non-combative way, I, well, I mean, not too combative anyway. So then Jibri says, no, no. Okay, so he doesn't believe that they're doomed? I just want you to be more he supportive. He said they wouldn't last. They're not going to last. You know, too. You know that that ain't no, going to work. No, no. Where is this coming from? I mean, just, just imagine that 
someone is saying that about you, it's just like, yeah, you're doomed. They're not, everyone understands that they're not gonna. I wonder if Jabri spends a lot of time online and he believes like the comments online represent reality or something. And I found that in certain pockets, well, maybe like every other pocket besides the comments on my channel, honestly, that I will come across, the rhetoric is extreme and usually not relatable to me. People will say they're doomed, she is this and that, he's this and that, they're terrible together, body shaming, clothes shaming, Ariel in particular. And I'm like, where is this coming from? This, this bullying and oppression. Well, I know where it comes from. It comes from a society that body shames and is sexist and is judgmental. And then you have a lot of people that are suffering and feel insecure and it makes them feel a tiny bit better as they're bullying someone else online that everyone has agreed that is worthy of being bullied. And it's all part of the ecosystem of reality TV that I didn't know about until, you know, I started watching in earnest a c couple of years ago, but it took me a while to learn like, oh, there seems to be, like, I mean, I say this sometimes, but I remember when I first started reacting to reality TV, the um, a major reaction to me in the comment section would be that people are like, oh my God, you're so wholesome. You're like Mr. Rogers and this kind of thing. And I'm like, I've never been called wholesome before. I, 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 I guess I can kind of see it, but to me, I'm just providing a clinical opinion and one that is shared by a lot of therapists. And we're not out to be wholesome. We're out to be accurate and helpful. And people would call me wholesome. I'm like, how? Yeah. So it took me a long time to realize that the fact that I wasn't shaming them in a variety of ways, by contrast meant that I was a saint. <laughs> and I'm like, it's kind of sad that for me to provide what I think to be a human response, not a abnormally compassionate or, you know, caring response. In fact, there are a lot of times when I feel like I'm kind of hard on these individuals, Ariel in particular, I, I've talked about how she and her very self-assured, preoccupied attachment, uh, you know, spe I'm speculating, of course, but her leaning into her preoccupied attachment reactivity and thinking that she's completely, at least on camera, completely justified in the way that she treats Biniam, I've, you know, I've called that out. So I'm, I'm not being Mr. Rod, I don't think Mr. Rogers would say that. <laughs> so maybe Jabri has absorbed all of that bullying online and thinks that this is normal or this is okay or this is what the crowd wants because we could imagine Jabri being pretty concerned with what the crowd wants. I, mean, I think he talks about that, you know, extensively. So maybe he's trying to lean into that. And I guess maybe given the way that the commentary often is around this, maybe Jabri will be considered a hero along these lines, but there's a lot of hubris involved in anyone claiming that they can read another relationship, particularly by watching a reality TV show and say it just right to their face as if it's a definitive scientific fact or something, especially when there's tons of evidence to the contrary. Their energy, their energy ain't gonna work. Jibri, don't what? put your mouth on their relationship. Let's think no, positive. No, I'll just give my opinion. My opinion don't matter. Don't listen to me. I think, I think they're gonna last, y'all gonna last, y'all gonna last, y'all gonna last. Yeah, I mean, that's what I thought he was saying that out of all the couples in the room, Ari and Vinny were not gonna last while everyone else is going to last. I mean, in terms of what we've seen on the show, which I'm just gonna take a guess and say, Jabri, that's the only data he has. He, he doesn't know these individuals, I don't think. Uh, maybe he does, but either way, to claim that for sure Eve and Muhammad are gonna work, for sure Bilal and Shadr are gonna work, for sure this couple's gonna work. I mean, I would say that Emily and Kobe seem like they're going to work. I know a lot of people might not agree or like that I say that, but I think behind the scenes, they're, they're fairly compatible. And particularly with Kobe's way of um, communicating and being differentiated. And, and also Emily's true, they have true affection for each other, true attraction. And they have a lot of reasons to try to work it out with the kids and they seemingly have support. Anyway, of any of the couples, I would think if I was to just put, if I was gambling, it'd be the weirdest ro roulette wheel of all time, or the weirdest sports betting. They should do that in Vegas. Do they? They probably do. You can bet on who wins the Oscars, who wins a presidential election. You should be able to bet. And then, wouldn't that be fascinating to like, what were the odds, right? What were the odds of Jabri and Miona lasting 
five years or something. You, you should be able to bet on it. But of course, then if you're them, you'd put a million dollars that they're going to break up and then you break up. <laughs> and so, But yeah, I, 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 I would imagine that if I were to handicap is the word for setting odds. And if I were to handicap all the couples, I would put them at the safest bet that they're, I, I don't wish that they break up. I don't, I don't know if they're going to break up. I, I never, I learned this long, a long time ago that I have no idea who stays together or even why people stay together. I'm, I'm not saying that judgmentally. It's just love is a mystery, relationships, motivations. But, you know, there'd be couples that I thought clinically and also in my personal life, you know, friends of mine that seem to be doing great. And even when I, and, and then, but then they get divorced and I hear their reasons and I'm like, huh, that doesn't really seem like a huge, it doesn't resonate with me as to why that. But again, for 25 years, I've been studying this and treating couples and realizing that everyone has a different motivation around that sort of thing. Everyone has a different gauge of, of whether or not they should stay or even engage in relationships. So it's, it's, it's extremely personal. It's hard to map your own preferences onto another relationship and know what anyone's going to do. So, you know, who knows? But of all the relationships, I would say that they're one, there's, you know, seems the most, because we didn't really see a lot of the foundation of a relationship. Shida and Bilal, uh, but but they also have a lot of cultural reasons perhaps to stay together. They don't have kids together. And they seem to have a fair amount of contempt, her for him. And the way that they communicate is, is pretty concerning. Even Muhammad seem fairly different as humans. And one of the main factors in satisfaction of a relationship is how similar you are. The cultural saying is that opposites attract, but scientifically it's the opposite, that similar people attract to each other. A lot of times the opposites attract idea comes from highlighting the few differences that two people will have. Be like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm a outgoing person and you're not. But when you look at all the other aspects of personality and belief system and where you are in life and where you're headed and where you've been, almost everything will line up uh, pretty closely, especially when you compare yourself to just anyone on the planet or even anyone in your town, honestly. You know, like me and my wife, we grew up in the same neighborhood, essentially. We have almost the identical sense of politics, almost the identical sense of where we want to go in our lives and, and what we like to do, places we like to eat. <laughs> I mean, there are compromises that are made, but uh, there's so many similarities when you just add them all up. But if we were to really focus on it, it's like, well, she's white and I'm half Japanese. Like, look, oh my God, so different. Or I'm an outgoing podcaster and she's a behind the scenes creative person. Oh my God, that's so different. But we're both creative people. You know, she does art and photography and all those kinds of things. And I do podcasting, which is, you know, a form of creativity and mu music, that kind of thing. So if you focus on difference and you come from a mindset that difference is what attracts, then you'll, you'll cherry pick those details. But anyway, so I don't know where this comes from. I think it's either he's trying to pander to the audience. He thinks he'll gain points that way and or he is displacing his anger towards his mom onto the two of them and he wishes them bad and wants them to break up. Y'all ain't gonna last. Y'all ain't gonna last. I'm just giving y'all my honest opinion. Oh, <laughs> so did he just point at Shada and Bilal and saying they're not? Okay, so I could see that. But these two, who knows? But as I've been saying, out of all the couples, in terms of scientific factors, they're the most likely to survive because they've been together the longest they don't have any current conflicts, really. I mean, you know that it, this season, while the cameras were in their house, if there was conflict between the two, they would have showed. They would have shown it, right? But the only conflict we saw was when she came to the gym and he was sparring with a woman, and that seemed to resolve itself pretty quickly. Soon after that, she was ringside and proud of him and happy that he was there. She was scared of it, which is a, absolutely a legit human reaction. I mean, you can die, you can break your neck, you can um, have brain damage. So, you know, she had a legit reaction. Of, oh my God, I can't, it's hard to watch, which is, which is rational, honestly. 
So, and in fact, I'm going to take a guess and say in 50 years, they'll look back at MMA and think it, it was barbaric that we even encouraged that kind of uh, thing. Now, I, you know, I played American football and, and watch American football, but anyway, so my point is, is that they seemingly didn't, you know, the other conflict was when her ex-husband came and there seemed to be some attempt at getting something going there and nothing really happened. So I, I, I'm guessing that 99.9% of the time they're, they're doing fine, as evidenced by the fact that we didn't see much conflict at all. So who knows? I mean, they could break up tomorrow. Maybe they've already broken up and you all know, and I just don't follow the tabloids, but I wouldn't say, I just don't agree with Jabri that we can agree to disagree. You don't think Bilal and nah, Shida are going to they, last? they're not going to work out. I, w- I will hope they do, but I don't think they will. My gut's usually right. My gut is usually right? <laughs> Hubris. Somehow, my gut is usually right. All right. Well, usually, but not always. Plus, huh? Yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty arrogant to say and hurtful. Three of everybody here, you think the two that won't last are Ari and Benny yeah, no. and Bilal and Shida. No. I think they have a better chance if she can start being so je- jealous and possessive and they got a kid together. You but think they, that they have the least? The least amount of chance. So in this situation, I almost, I think I agree. And I guess it, he just is wording it. I mean, I'm basically saying the same thing. So if I'm going to say that he's arrogant, then I guess I'm arrogant for saying it. But I, I'd like to think I'm saying it in a much more tentative way with all the caveats that I have. He's saying it definitively. You're you're doomed, and I know that after watching a reality TV show. But I, I will say that, so the fact that he looks at Ariella and Biniam and says that they're doomed just tells me that his gut at least doesn't align with mine. So there's that. But I also think, yeah, I, you know, I, let's see what, what they say. That's absolutely. Bilal? I tend not to speak about what I don't know. Okay. Well, at least I'm aggressive. Okay, so I think they edited it out a little bit there, but for Bilal, he is doing his controlled thing and saying, uh, I tend not to speak what I don't know about, saying that he shouldn't speak about, you know, that Jibri shouldn't speak about what he doesn't know about. You but think they, that they have the least? The least amount of chance, absolutely. Bilal? I tend not to speak about what I don't know. Okay. Well, at least I'm aggressive, aggressive, and not passive aggressive. Hey. Okay, I th- again, she's joking. I think she's just trying to play it off. I think her strategy with today is to participate but not get entangled. And so she's, so I, I don't think she believes that. I don't, I don't think she's saying, yay, I'm aggressive instead of passive aggressive. All right, well, if you didn't know already, we have an audio podcast. Some of you only know me through YouTube, but we have a separate set of episodes on the audio podcast. I mean, we often will post the audio podcast episodes on YouTube. But anyway, you can go to your phone, podcast app, subscribe, and listen to the podcast. We go into much more depth on the topics that I very briefly will touch on in these videos. So there's that. We also, my dog is barking. We also have a website where you can find all the episodes there and other information. You know, we've made up until this point maybe 1,500 episodes, 1,500 episodes, probably an average of an hour, hour and a half each. That's a lot of information, a lot of me yammering. So uh, the website has most of those episodes. I mean, some of our early episodes I actually deleted because they were so bad. (laughs) I've been doing this for 14 years. In the the first few years, there's probably only 10% that are still presentable. And even those, I'm a little questionable, but anyway. So you can go to the website and you can find all those episodes and it's just kind of a fun compilation of all the work that I've done uh, and, you know, content provision. (laughs) Anyway, everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.